Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. I was doing some ink maintenance today and I thought, oh, why don't I do a quick video to kind of share some of my tips and tricks for getting the most out of your alcohol ink and how to save money on it too because alcohol ink can get expensive, especially if you're doing resin projects or you're doing coffee mugs or any of the big um, alcohol ink paintings. Uh, it's good to know how you can keep your inks in good working order and how you can save some money. So the first thing that I want to share is something I just started doing today and this is um, actually index indexing the, the bottles of ink. Now I was going to make a paper index like on Yupo and I started to do that but I was just like that's going to be a pain so I'm going to have to find the, um, I'm going to have to find my color that I need that I'm going to have to dig through and find my bottles and I'm like I just want to be able to see, look at my bottles and see what I have. So the first thing that I did was I took a correction this is just a correction pen from the Dollar Tree. You get two in a package for a dollar, or you could use just regular whiteout. And I put a dot on the top of all of these jars, and here's one that I haven't colored yet. And then what you want to do is just put a little dab of ink. But before you do that, you want to look at the jar when you open it up and see if you need to clean the threads. Because there's nothing more frustrating when you're working on a project to find out that, um, that you can't get your bottle of ink open and you have to wrestle with that. So if you do have that happen, if, if you're, if you're, first tip, if your jar is stuck and you can't get that cap twisted off, what you can do is you can wrap a rubber band around the cap a few times. I also use this trick for when I'm, when I want to refill a Posca pen <laughs> because I'll wrap the rubber band around the top of it and I can twist it to open it up and then it'll make it easy to open up. It will just give you enough of a grip. So there's my tip there if your bottles get gunky like mine because you haven't maintained them and you can't get the lids off. So first tip. Now the second thing I want to show you is how to keep them in clean working order. Now I'm just going to push these out of the way because I've managed to, you know, use up all my space where I actually need to be showing you stuff. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to spray some rubbing alcohol into the cap. And I just keep some rubbing alcohol in a spray bottle. Um, it's a, it's a, thing I always had from when I would do soap making because you'd spray over the melt and pour soap and then um, after you'd poured it and it'll take any bubbles out. So I'm going to just start taking any ink off the outside of my cap because sometimes it'll feel sticky to your hands because you know you're doing some masterpiece and your fingers are all dirty because you've been, uh, you know, you're grabbing bottles of ink with dirty fingers and at least I do. I don't, I don't have one of these pristine uh, craft spaces. And then you just want to kind of put your paper towel in there, push it in there as well as you can, and just twist and get out any excess ink. Because with that alcohol ink, it's funny, you'd think it wouldn't, but when it dries, it's very sticky if it gets built up and dries. And then the other thing you want to do is just kind of hold your bottle up to a paper towel and give it some sprays of rubbing alcohol and then um, that's going to soften that ink. Look at how much came out right there. That's going to be a gummy mess. Uh, it can glue your bottle shut and then it's so frustrating because alcohol ink is not cheap so you want to make sure that you can use everything you've bought and paid for, right? Alright, look at that. That's pretty good. You don't need to have it immaculate but you just want to have it, you know, so that you can get the lid off when you're ready. And then what you want to do after you put the correction fluid on the tip of your cap, if it's a black cap, just give it a little dab of the ink. Now if it looks too dark and you can't tell what the color is, all you have to do is just set a corner of the paper towel right to it. Remember, it will dry a little bit lighter, but you can get the excess off and then you can see what color you actually have on the tip of that uh, that bottle of ink. So I think that's a really fun uh, fun trick and of course if your caps are white you can just drab it right on top of the white caps. Now the next tip I have is saving money on alcohol ink. So these are kind of name brand inks here. Um, I've had really good luck with the Jacquard Pinata inks. These are between two and three dollars, usually around two fifty a bottle. Um, and also the Adirondack inks. These are about three to four dollars a bottle for, and these are um, half an ounce. These bottles here. Um, and Jacquard also has an eight ounce bottle. So if you use a lot of any of col any of the colors, your of the Jacquard colors, you're going to save money by getting the eight ounce bottle. Um, so generally I don't go through that much so these sizes are perfect for me. Um, but I did find a inexpensive solution here for alcohol inks and these are available. I'll show you the box. I just ordered them. I haven't really used them for much but um, but they seem to be fine. They're, they're water resistant. Um, these are the Limino 
Lim Limino? Alcohol inks. There's tons of different companies like this on Amazon that just sell really inexpensive alcohol inks. The bottles are a little bit smaller, but they run about a dollar a bottle or less, so you really can't beat it. I found the pinks and the red, the pink and the red, the cherry and the peach color, which is really a, like a bubblegum pink. Those were kind of dull, but all the other ones I thought were really vibrant and pretty. The orange isn't super, isn't super bright, but um, but other than those, I found the other ones to be really nice, and I and it comes with a white and a cream too, so I got 22 colors for like $20. Um, so you get 10 milliliters instead of 15 milliliters. You can see a comparison of the bottles, but if you're just getting started and you're not sure what colors you're really going to use and you just want to experiment and not spend a lot of money, that's the way to go. Now, the other thing, the other way I get alcohol inks is when I buy reinkers, and um, that would be like marker refills. So here you can see I've got some Copic refills and I've got a Blick refill here. And uh, when I bought these, my Copic refills were about $5 a piece at Scrapbook Pal. And my um, Blick refill, I think I paid like $3.75 or $4 on Blick for that. And I thought, okay, you know, I'm gonna, it's gonna refill a marker a lot of times, so that's a good deal. Um, but I was very disgusted to learn that Copic has reduced the size of their markers from um, 25 milliliters to 12 milliliters and kept the price the same. So that annoyed me. That is actually why I bought these because I wanted to see if I could figure out a, kind of a good method for mixing your own ink colors. Um, to refill your markers. I'm, I'm still going to work on that. Um, I haven't come up with a real reliable way to do it other than just keep mixing until you get the color right, which is what I typically do if I have a marker go dry, you know, in mid, um, you know, mid project. In fact, I mixed this color here to go with Blick number 85 and I got a really good match and I had some ex excess so I just keep my excess in other little jars. You can find little jars like this at dollar stores and travel sections um, like in multi-packs or in craft stores or you know maybe you can re reuse something you have around the house. Maybe if you do cooking and you have flavored oils you could reuse those those um, those little jars, but um, those actually came in a smart art box, I think. So um, so I just mixed up the ink for that marker and uh, and saved the rest of it so I can refill it again. Um, I also recommend having either some colorless blender. Um, <laughs> liquid, it's just basically ethanol, straight ethanol, like 100% alcohol. If you don't have this, you can use denatured alcohol, and that can be found at a hardware store. I would get a quart. You can buy it in gallons, but you'll probably never go through it. It's sold as a, um, as like a, a fuel as well. Um, the only thing about the denatured alcohol, I would just try not to get it on your skin too much or try to like, or spray apply it just because, um, I know they, denatured alcohol, I believe is ethanol with a poison added so people don't drink it. Um, because it's, you know, uh, they don't want people to buy it to drink it. Um, this, I guess, would be <laughs> would be fine to drink, although I do not recommend it. Um, but of course, this is more expensive. This is like, I don't know, I think I paid about maybe $10 for this at, at the most. Um, and for Denature, you could probably get a gallon for $10. So, um, so yeah, it'll do the same thing. Um, the next tip I have to share is your your uh, stamping pads. If you have alcohol stamping pads, such as Stazon, uh, I highly recommend having reinkers for your Stazon pads or mixing some alcohol ink to, to match. Um, so I generally, I, I don't really like Stazon ink that much, but there's some situations where I'm stamping on um, tile or dominoes or glass or metal, and that's the only ink that's really gonna, that's gonna stick to it. So, um, so I have refills in jet black and timber brown. Now sometimes you'll notice when you are stamping with your stays on pads that they're feeling dry. So you go ahead and re-ink it. And then when you stamp with it, it feels really sticky. Um, your pad can dry out when there's plenty of ink in there. So what I recommend doing, if you are stamping and your ink pad feels really sticky, use a denatured alcohol or just the Copic, uh, blender refill and just add that to the pad and let it soak in. And what that's going to do is it's going to reactivate all of that dried alcohol ink in there because alcohol ink can be reactivated with alcohol. No, it, you know, no matter how long it sat there and dried. And, um, 
and that will bring it back to new and it, when you stamp with it, it won't feel sticky and gummy. It'll actually give you a good result. So if you've been re-inking your stays on pad a lot and you don't feel like you've been using it that much and you're not getting good results, just add alcohol to it, like a high percentage alcohol, denatured alcohol or blending solution, that is going to really help you um, get a good result from those alcohol ink pads. I'm not sure if there's any other brands that do alcohol ink in a stamp pad other than stays on, but the same, um, the same idea would apply. And of course you could mix your own alcohol inks um, for or a to refill an alcohol ink ink pad they might like this might be a little bit thicker than your typical um, alcohol ink but by the time a little bit of, of uh, it evaporates it's going to be just about right um, let's see do I have any other tips for you with the alcohol ink uh, I told you about the cheaping to save money. Um, I think that's pretty much it. Um, I do recommend... Oh, um, another thing I want to mention is that the Copic ink refills are really expensive, but if you have any of the cheap markers that don't sell refills, a lot of them go on the Shin Hand Touch ink system, and Jackson's Art sells the Shin Hand Touch refills. They're the same size as these, and I think they're around $4 a refill. So all you gotta do is match the numbers up. And uh, I'm talking about like the Classic Ahuhu, the um, Artix, um, Art and Fly, I think. There's so many. Actually, Art and Fly has refills too for about five bucks. So, um, you know, that would be pretty easy to buy refills for that too. Um, so yeah, I definitely recommend refills. But if you can't find a refill or you just don't want to have, you don't want to pay the price for those Copic, Copic refills because they're so expensive now, you can totally you know, mix up your own. Uh, so what I was hoping I'd be able to do would be able to um, swatch a bunch of these out and then when I'm ready to refill a marker, like say I have a dry marker, which I actually don't think any of my markers are dry currently, but let me just grab one just, uh, just for fun. And let's say if I swatch it, I would be able to say, okay, that's, well, that's like lime, but it's a lot lighter, so I could take that color and I can mix a bunch of blending solution into it and come out with the color that I need. You know what I mean? Um, so that was my plan with these swatches. It was not going well because I kept labeling them and then the, they would seep out to the color, to the, um, to the, the word I was writing. So I think what I need to do is swatch them first and then label them. Um, We'll see. I, then I thought, well, geez, if I just have the swatch on the on the little uh, bottle, that'll probably work just fine. And um, I know not everybody is going to go for that. Not everybody is going to risk making their own ink for their markers. I know, you know, Copics especially are expensive, and I think that's why they've raised the prices, because I know very few people would dare to, you know, mix their own inks. But it gets to a point where it's like, okay, I bought Copics because in the long run, I was going to save money on these, but... Um, uh, but, you know, you've raised the prices of the refills. Now it's like, I might as well just go buy a new marker because by the time I have to buy, a, uh, like, replace a nib and buy a refill, you know, it's costing, it's costing way more than the marker, you know? Yeah, I don't know. You guys can let me know what you think down below. I'm just really ticked that they charge the same amount and they have half the amount of ink now. Um, another tip, just to, like, cleaning your, um, cleaning the tops of your bottles so you can get the caps off. I also recommend that you make sure your markers are clean as well. So if you have a marker, I don't know if this one's dirty or not. That one's actually not too bad. Okay, this one's kind of dirty. Um, so with your markers, you can see that there'll be kind of like ink build up there. Um, you don't want that to be building up inside the cap because, um, it can dry on the nib of the marker and make the nib feel real gummy, kind of like the gummy ink pad situation I was telling you about. You don't want that. That's going to, um, ink drying in the nib is going to make it really hard and difficult to work with. So what you want to do is spray it with your denatured alcohol, spray that uh, plastic, wipe off any of the excess ink. A Q-tip is really good for this. Try to... Yeah, and the good thing that it's, um, I'm making such a mess. Good thing you can reactivate alcohol ink all the time because then you can clean up your marker barrels too. I would use a Q-tip here. Get right down in there where the nib is and really just wipe out that dried ink, especially with reds for some reason. It seems like if I have a marker that gets kind of gummy and dry, it's, a, it's like a dark red. I don't know what it is about. Probably because of the concentration of color they need in that. And then, um, oh, good grief. Uh, I'm all thumbs today. Um, and then that's going to make your marker last a lot longer. And of course, you know, clean up. Clean up the barrel when you're done so you don't leave nasty fingerprints on your bougie expensive markers. <laughs> oh boy. I love Copics. I'm just really, I'm really uh, disappointed that they, uh, that they 
cut the uh, size of the refills. That really just that really just annoys me. Does it annoy you? Let me know in the comments below. So I think that's pretty much it. Um, another thing that might be handy, I'll show you how I store my alcohol inks. I have them in a crate here. I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. Here we go. You can see my messy table. Isn't that lovely? Um, and then what I do, like around my reinkers, I have those actually with a rubber band around them. Ew, can I slide that in there? I have them with a rubber band around them so they don't tip over. And then I thought, well, you know, another good idea would be to take all my metallic colors, like these here, um, these are the alcohol pearls, and put a rubber band around them. I don't know if I can or not. They might, they might want to tip over on me. I think I'll put a rubber band around them later. And then take my alcohol reinkers because I'm really not going to use those for probably anything other than inking up the ink pads and it's they kind of get in the way and then they're hard to find when I need them. Put a rubber band around the alcohol reinkers. I have a white, which I would do not recommend the stays on white ink pad. I don't even know if they make that anymore. That was such, you know, you have to ink it up every single time you use it. It's such a pain in the butt. Um, I guess it might be handy if you're just kind of like, if you have metal stuff and you just want to like ink over the raised edges or something, but I just find it to be a pain. Um, oh, here's another tip. So for like a cheap alternative to the Ranger alcohol ink blending tool, take an old kid's block and um, glue Velcro to the sides of it, like keep the part where the letter is ready for like gripping, and you have one, two, three, four sides there, and then take craft felt, which is like, not, I don't know, 25 cents a sheet in the craft store, and then just cut it into little squares and stick it on there, and then you have the disposable little uh, little felts. They work just as good as the expensive um, uh, Ranger Tim Holtz alcohol ink blending. There's some that were used that I thought, I think I can use them again. I think they're probably still left on the block from the last time I used them. Um, they do get hard. You probably don't want to use them too many times because then like the ink, of course, will reactivate and, uh, and transfer onto your next project. So I probably wouldn't recommend reusing them, but they're cheap enough because, you know, you can make a huge baggie full for like, you know, 25 cents or less. So that would be another tip to make your own ink applicator. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to put these away. I like these Marabou alcohol inks too. How much is in here? These are, these are a little bit more than half an ounce. These are 0.67 ounces or 20 milliliters. So they're a bigger bottle. Um, I th I'm not sure if they're the same price or not, but I really like these. They're nice, vibrant, clean colors. I will say a couple of the colors that I got on the cheap here were not that vibrant. The, the orange, red, pink. But the other ones, the blues and purple, I thought were really nice. Um... So hopefully that helps you. I really like the Pinata the, the, by Jacquard, and I know they have some kits, some like multi-packs on, um, on Amazon, and the big like stores like Blick and Jerry's where you can buy, they're called Exciter Packs, and you can get a, um, you can get a big like pack of 12 or something for, I think it's probably about $25. So it's about $2 a bottle, but um, they're very tried and true colors and you know, they work, they work really well. Um, these are some tweezers that are for like when you need to pull the nib out of your marker if you don't want to use your fingers. I usually just wrap them in a paper towel and gently pluck it out so I can refill it if I'm going to be using it again. Um, I generally actually try not to remove the nibs when I'm refilling my alcohol markers. I try to just drip the ink onto the chisel nib unless it's like super, super dry and it needs a ma major um, a major inking. I love that I can see now. I couldn't see what colors these bottles were. I'd have to take them all out and look at them. And, uh, and you know, it's just, a, it's just kind of a time it's kind of a uh, kind of a time waster there. Now I'm going to see if I can actually just put these new colors in there. You can see it's not like it's not going to be one of these you know craft room on Pinterest type deals here, but um, but it works. I just since the caps were right here, I'm just like well I'm just gonna just gonna drip the ink on the cap and call it a day, and uh, that worked fine. I will say that using the correction fluid, the Dollar Tree correction fluid. Um, works really well. That ink sticks to it really well, and you get a really good um, you get a really good look at that color. So I might go over there if I, or maybe use the kind of the brush like the uh, oh, you know, the regular kind of correction fluid. The name brand, the uh, Bic. What do you call it? Shoot, I can't remember the name of it. That you know what I mean, like the Bic correction fluid. Oh, can I fit in? This one's really neat. This I got this in a Smart Art box along with these other Marabou inks. Um, I think it's one of the best things I got from a Smart Art box. Um, I got some pinata inks in there once too. But this is called Rainbow, and it's just like super glossy. Um, let me see if I can show it. Let me shake it up and show it to you on something. It's so pretty. Um, it's just like a, uh, a like a mica. It's kind of like what's in the alcohol pearls, but it's really like 
it's really, can, I don't know, can you see that? Let me see, I don't know if I can catch a light because my lights are set up so it doesn't glare, but it just almost looks like fireworks in there. It's so pretty. Um, it's such a fun additive. If you have alcohol inks, I highly recommend getting a bottle of this. I'm thinking these are about $3 a piece. I think I looked them up on, on Blick uh, when I first got these because I was wondering, so I'm like, geez, I could go for some more of those. They're really nice. Um, yeah, just keep some cheap alcohol, uh, rubbing alcohol or isopropyl alcohol rather in a spray bottle for cleanup. You can get cleanup solution. Like I've got some cleanup solution because it came in a smart art box. Um, and then some extender because it came in a smart art box, but I don't think those are really necessary to get started in alcohol inks. And the other thing that I keep in here is um, I keep extra nibs. Sometimes when you buy markers, you will find they'll come with extra nibs. So I just keep them, even if I don't love the markers and I end up using up the markers and I have nibs left over, I just keep them in here because sometimes you can use them. Um, I really like the Art and Fly nibs and I really like the Blick nibs and I think those are pretty much the same as the Copic nibs, so they're an option. These Electroset nibs, I don't know if you can get them anymore, but they are, um, they go on top of a Pro marker and then they give you an ultra, ultra fine point. And um, I thought that was really that was really kind of cool. Um, if you have those, they're now called the Windsor and Newton Pro Markers, I think, because Windsor and Newton bought them out. Um, and then, like, I got a good sale once. It was a good sale at Consumer Crafts, which they're no longer around. But I bought a bunch of um, other nibs just to kind of play with to see, you know, because sometimes you just want to replace a nib. You want a finer point on a marker or something. And, uh, you know, not all nibs are interchangeable, but a lot of times you can make them work. So, um so yeah, I just keep all my little extra nibs in there and my blending tools so that when I'm ready to do some crafting, all I have to do is grab this crate and take it to my table. This crate is part of a, there was, it's a chest of drawers. It has three drawers. I picked it up at Joanne's in the section where they have the, um, the wooden things for sale. I think it was, yeah, you know what? It might've been AC Moore. So maybe Michaels would have it, but it's such a, just the perfect height. It just holds the, I can just close it with the, um, with these uh, reinkers in it because the way that the drawers go, they're actually like runners, like wooden runners you sit on, so the drawers aren't like tight to each other. Uh, so if you have this drawer, check it out. It might be perfect for your reinkers and whatnot. But the nice thing about this being nice and full is that things aren't tipping over and everything's standing up and I can see everything. And if all your inks are standing up, you're not going to have spilling, which is another issue. Or you're not going to have the, the ink leaking out of the tip and then gumming the neck of the bottle up so you can't get the caps off. But remember the rubber band trick and that should, that should, uh, make it so you can get into your ink and then just make sure you clean it out good and you're going to be all set. Um, I don't do like alcohol ink. I do, well, I've done a couple of alcohol ink paintings, but that's not my favorite way to use these. I use these more as a medium to color non-porous surfaces. Um, oh, and another tip. If you're stamping with a stays on pad, say you're making coasters or you're doing some home decor and you're stamping on like those uh, dominoes or on tiles, things like that, that's an alcohol ink. So if you were to color it with your, with your Copic or your Sharpie, you're going to lift up all that ink you put down that that your stamping ink so what you want to do is use a different type of marker and what I use is a chart pack marker and it's xylene based and um, I just have like a pack of I don't know 10 or 15 colors and I just use that anytime I need to uh, color something that I've stamped with stays on if it's like a non-porous thing because it's also a solvent ink but it doesn't react to the alcohol so if you use those together um, it'll work well and you can use a clear uh, chart pack blender to lighten up any of those colors that you have. So even though you don't have as many as you might have in alcohol markers, it'll still work. So it's just something to keep in mind. The other neat thing about the, the chart pack blenders, which are xylene based, not only can you color them on top of the alcohol, you could have a whole alcohol ink piece and you don't want to mess it up, but you want to add some touches. You can add the touches with the chart pack and it won't mess up. It won't dissolve your alcohol. Um, the other neat thing about that, the clear blender, the xylene, which you can also buy at the hardware store in big uh, quarts and gallons, that xylene will do photo transfers if you have a photocopied picture. So I've done coasters where I've transferred black and white um, laser printed or photocopied artwork. And it's just really cool. I have a video on that too on my channel with some Halloween coasters I made a few years ago if you're interested. I just went to the library and I had them photocopy something that I had designed on my um, computer and uh, it was a lot of fun. worked really well. So there you go. I actually had one more tip that I forgot to share because this is actually sitting on the floor and I really don't use it that much but I do keep it in here with my inks and uh, this is just a plastic palette that 
Um, if I'm using ink and um, like I need to, maybe I'm painting a domino or something, I need to go back in for little bits of ink, I will squirt some ink in here and let it dry. And this can be used as a portable palette and you can use it one of two ways. You can get the ink out of here either by taking a paintbrush and taking a little bit of your blending solution. This is not my favorite way, by the way, but let me just show you there. This is great if you're doing any alcohol ink painting too. So you could put your ink right here on your palette and if you don't use it all, you can let it dry. And then you just pick up the, um, you pick up the, some alcohol with your brush and then you can go in with whatever color you like. And then you could just, you know, paint it on your picture or whatever. You can mix colors on the palette. You could do whatever you like and um, you just keep adding the blending solution to blend it out. The other way I like to use this, which I think is a lot more useful, oh, and to clean it, what you do to clean your brush is just take a little rubbing alcohol in a little cup and um, get as much as you can out and then wipe it on a paper towel until it comes clean. And you can also wash it with soap and water, but when if alcohol ink dries on your brush, it will feel gummy and hard and gross. So it is kind of a pain, um, especially nowadays when alcohol is kind of hard to come by. The other way I like to use it is to take a clear blending marker, and if um, you know if you get inexpensive sets of markers, you may have more of these and you know what to do with. Um, and then you can just pick up any color. Oh, look at that! It's probably need to put a little blending solution in there because it's gotten a little bit brittle. And then you can just almost use it like a um, like a chameleon marker. You can keep coloring it out until it fades away to nothing. So another way you can get that effect of like a chameleon pen. And you just scribble it until it comes clean and you can go in with your next color. Like I said, this is more for just like if you want to add a little bit of color to something or you just want a little travel palette. Maybe you're doing some stamping at a friend's house and you just want to bring a clear blending marker and um, you know, and your a few colors in your palette, that'll work. There are palettes made for this that have tons of little wells, um, but I already had this on hand and, um, and it works fine for me. I don't really use it that much, but there it is if I do need it. So there's my last tip. I forgot it because when I was unpacking this, uh, this box, I just set it on the floor and um, since I don't use it that much, I didn't think about it. Uh, but there you have it. And then if any of these cups that you've used for ink, like you've used up the ink, you can just clean it out with rubbing alcohol and use it for another color. There's no need to throw it away. Um, yeah, these little, these little containers are perfect. Just keep using them. And that's all there is really this time. Um, thumbs up if you liked it. Thanks for watching. Until next time, happy crafting.